Um, so it's now my job to talk about um, the World Development Report, and you know Simon has done an excellent job of talking about all different parts of the, the World Development Report. Uh, I decided to just focus mainly on Hong Kong because Hong Kong is where we are, um, and I think one of the major innovations. I think this is an excellent report. Uh, it was. It was a really enjoyable read, uh, and like Simon has pointed out, it has many innovations and it takes a, a hard look. And I especially appreciated, you know, uh, 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 Simeon is is an academic, and so he takes a very rigorous look at all the data and is very frank and forthright about uh, the, the the advantages and disadvantages of the data that he has access to. Uh, but one of the major uh, innovations is this development of the Human Capital Index. And like Simon pointed out, Hong Kong does extremely well on the Human Capital Index, right? Uh, so. Uh, in, in a list of 157 countries, like he showed you, Hong Kong is ranked number four, which is really, really quite good. And I think Hong Kong should be proud of this very high um, uh, rank that it has. Uh, I thought, um, you know, uh, we should try and understand how it gets this really high rank. I think, you know, we should, of course, congratulate ourselves, but we should also think about where that rank comes from. Um, and so uh, this is something that uh, Simeon uh, showed us, but let me just break it down in a little bit more detail. Uh, so the, the Human Capital Index is made up of three components, and these three components are what they call survival, school, and health. Um, and survival over here is really just measuring whether a child who is born in, let's say, 2018 in Hong Kong, how likely is that child uh, to survive to the age of five? Okay, so that's the first component. Uh, the second component is school. Uh, so this is measuring expected years of schooling. If a child is born in Hong Kong today, uh, by the age of 18, how many years of schooling is he expected, he or she, expected to receive? Uh, and then that gets adjusted by the standardized international um, test scores. Uh, and then the third one is health, which is uh, the survival rate of, of a person who's 15. What is the chance that that person will live till the age of 60? Now, these three components, like Simon pointed out, are, are weighted, uh, and there is good sort of theoretical and empirical backing for the weights that are given to these different components. But essentially what happens is these things are then multiplied with each other. Okay, so after they're weighted, these three components get multiplied with each other. What is really nice about multiplying these three components as opposed to, let's say, adding these components is that you really, if you want to do well, you have to do well on, you know, you, you have to kind of do well on all three of them. Because if you do poorly on any one of them, right, so let's imagine that we're doing a really good job on keeping people healthy, so people are surviving really long, so you'll get that both in the health component as well as in the survival component, but they don't go to school. Uh, then that is going to kind of pull down the entire index and you will not do very well, right? So now when you think about how do we do in Hong Kong, you can immediately begin to see, if you know a little bit about Hong Kong, why it is that we do so well in Hong Kong. So survival is the chance that you will live till the age of um, five. Hong Kong has the lowest, possibly the lowest infant mortality rate in the entire world. Right? So the chance that a child born in Hong Kong today will live till the age of five is essentially 99%. Uh, you look at school, um, I've looked at data on um, average years of schooling. If you look at the Hong Kong 2011 census, you will find that three quarters of the population, age 25 and above, um, actually did not get a full 14 years of schooling. Okay, because traditionally the education system in Hong Kong has been such where people have not been able really to go to university and so a lot of people have not even completed high school. Uh, but that has changed in the recent past and so university spaces have opened up, there's a lot more emphasis on education and so the expected years of schooling in Hong Kong as of now, if you are 18 you're expected to have received 13, 13 and a half years of schooling by that age. So expected years of schooling Hong Kong is doing really well. Okay. This thing then gets adjusted by um, these international test scores. So the idea there is, sure, we send people to school, but do they really learn anything? 
that is a value. And one way to check what they're learning, I'm sure any of you who has children has, you know, these, you take tests, these kids take tests, and these test scores tell us something about whether they've learned anything. So these international standardized test scores tell you how much achievement, what, what sort of learning achievement these kids have. And one of the best known international uh, standardized tests is what is called the PISA. And Hong Kong does extremely well on the PISA. Okay, so Hong Kong students are very, very good at taking tests. This should not come as a surprise. So we do very well. So then when you adjust these years of schooling by these international test scores, we still continue to look really good. Okay, so that's the second component. And then going back to health, like I said, uh, infant mortality rates are very low, but life expectancy rates are also extremely high. So another thing you can feel proud about is that Hong Kong has the highest life expectancy in the entire world. Okay, a person born in Hong Kong today will live till 84 years old in expectation. Um, and so that gives you the three components. And then you multiply them, and so lo and behold, no surprise, we do really well. Okay. But here's, um, so, so this is great, but now some questions. Um, oh yeah, so, so the interpretation of the human capital index is in terms of your productivity relative to your full potential. And so what the HCI predicts is that a child born in Hong Kong today uh, will achieve a productivity that is 82% of his or her full potential, which is really quite high. Uh, but let me ask this question. The report is about the changing nature of work. Yeah, so it's about the skills that our children will need for the work that they will be doing in the future, and many of these jobs that they will be doing are jobs that we are not even able to imagine at this point in time. Uh, but what we can tell, and what the World Development Report is suggesting, is that the jobs that they will need, or the kinds, the, the characteristics that these, uh, that these future workers will need, will be ones where they will have to be adaptable. They will, be, they will have to be able to change the kinds of jobs that they do, right? So routine tasks are the tasks that we think robots are going to take away, and so the non-routine is what we are looking for here. Now, adaptability seems to depend on cognitive skills as well as socio-behavioral skills, and I would submit that Hong Kong does really well on the cognitive skills. Uh, when you look at socio-behavioral skills, you can unpack these. Uh, this is more in the realm of psychology, perhaps, or education science, but you can unpack them in terms of curiosity, creativity, uh, resilience, what a lot of people are now calling grit, innovativeness, the ability to collaborate, participate in teams, and interpersonal skills. Now, um, all of these things are probably very, a, a really good idea because they will help our children adapt to the future of work. You can also argue that these are things that we should intrinsically care about because all of these are characteristics that you know, help, help people self-actualize. Uh, but whatever the reason is, uh, as an educator, I would also submit that these are skills that are very, very difficult to teach. It's a lot easier to teach you algebra. It's a lot harder to teach you to be curious. Um, again, as a university professor, we have now, and the, the World Development Report actually mentions this, uh, the Hong Kong university system has gone from a three-year system to a four-year system. And this extra year that we are having these kids spend in university are meant to be geared towards developing, um, you know, be becoming more innovative, doing more experiential learning, doing exchange programs, and all of these things are really, really good. But note that we are getting them when they're already 18 years old, right? And so for good reason, the World Development Report does not even, I mean, not good reason. I know you would like to. But you also point out very, um, um, I would agree with that, is that early childhood interventions are much more likely to be effective than when you start intervening when kids are 18 years old already. And one of the things that the psychology literature uh, points out is some of these things, resilience in particular, does not come from teaching a child to be resilient, but perhaps comes from letting a child experiment and letting a child fail and then learning from their failure, right? Picking themselves up after failure. And this is where my problem is. Uh, the Hong Kong pre-primary, primary, secondary education system does not leave a lot of room for kids to fail, right? Um, and this is not just my concern. Um, the economic, the Economist Intelligence Unit 
created something called the Educating for the Future Index. Uh, it had 35 countries that it tried to create this index for, and it asked the question, does education promote the skills in these different countries, 35 countries, does education promote the skills that will be needed in the future? It uh, placed a special focus on the government's commitment to the teaching environment that will be needed for the future, uh, the policy environment and the socio-economic environment. So to break that down a little bit, teaching environment over here uh, refers to teacher quality, teacher training, payment, teacher pay, things like that. Uh, the policy environment refers to education policy, whether the curriculum exists that will create the skills needed for the future, whether these things are being assessed. Uh, and and uh, socio-economic environment refers to uh, things like, um, you know, what kind of society we live in, how much diversity there is, cultural diversity, gender diversity, environmental protection, whether it's a free and open society, and so on and so forth. And when you look at uh, this index, and you look at these three components, there are 35 countries, remember, in this list. Hong Kong does quite well relative to the other 35 countries, OECD countries, on uh, the teaching environment. But Hong Kong does not do well on the socio-economic environment, and Hong Kong definitely does not do well on the policy environment. Okay. So uh, if Hong Kong, you know, we can compare ourselves to Singapore, or we can compare ourselves to what the ideal should be. And uh, we can ask ourselves, what will the future of education in Hong Kong be? And will Hong Kong continue to, to have this really high rank? because um, technology, again, is making lots of things possible. It's going to also make it a lot easier for the World Bank to collect the kinds of data in the future that will be measuring much more accurately the kinds of skills that probably will matter in the future. And so the, as the human capital index methodology itself evolves, uh, Hong Kong is going to have to fight to keep up because this rank that we have, which is rank number four, is not something that we can um, rest our laurels on. Uh, those of you who took an interest in the Chief Executive's policy address um, probably noted that she has announced uh, a lifelong learning grant. There is a task force for the review of the school curriculum. And all of these things, I think, are positive developments, uh, which make me hopeful that by the time uh, Simeon and his team invent a new version two of the Human Capital Index, maybe we will be fighting to stay in place. Thank you very much. <laughs>